Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, online, thisweekinamerica.us. What compels someone with almost no experience of sailing to go and buy an 8-ton, 30-foot cruising yacht, especially when it's located not only in another city, but in another state? Why would someone like that risk sailing the boat home on a 1600 nautical mile voyage, even if it meant facing the daunting prospect of sailing through hundreds of miles of the largest reef system in the world, across the infamous and fickle waters of Carpentaria and the open waters of the tropical Arafira uh, Sea? Well, that's just what Russ Swan did, and he shares his story in the nonfiction memoir, Well, Why Not Comes to Darwin?, Called a skillfully created story and the perfect length for a companion book while on your own adventure. Russ Swan is an Australian born in Longreach in central Queensland of Australia. In his younger years, Russ worked in sheep shearing sheds in a law court's office. Called up to national service in the Australian Army, he served in Vietnam, followed with an Army career. After his discharge, he drove taxis before joining the Northern Territory Police, working there for 19 years. He's a cruising sailor with several voyages completed in Australian and Indonesian waters, a freelance travel writer, author of a number of magazine articles, and a book, A Tanambar Experience. He's working on a sequel to Loana Comes to Darwin with other books on voyages planned. Russ Swan from Australia, the author of Loana Comes to Darwin, with us on This Week in America. Russ, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Oh, Thank you very much, Rick. This is such a great story, and we'll talk about this whole came about it. You didn't really start out to write a book, but let's go back to the very beginning here. You talk about it right off the bat in the uh, in the book uh, uh, called The Decision. Here you are. You just realize you're the new owner uh, of, a, of a yacht. Then you realize that uh, this is not only not in your city, it's not in your state, and you've got several options to get it to you. Talk about that when the realization set in that, okay, I can have it trucked in, I can have it delivered, or I can go sail it. What was that process like for you? I guess you, you've got you've obviously thought about these things beforehand, but it, it really doesn't sort of hit the bottom of your stomach until you've, uh, you stand there looking at uh, this yacht sitting on the hard stand and you're thinking, now I've got to get this home and uh, what am I going to do? Uh, I guess it started from when we first made the uh, offer to the previous owners and they they accepted it and I thought god well, that sort of floored me I didn't think they'd accept it but they did and uh, anyway uh, I was stuck with this boat that I had to get home somehow. No it's interesting because this was quite a distance you had to travel talk about where you live and where you went to purchase the boat and then you you, you sailed it back to your place. Yeah, well, well, I lived in Darwin. Darwin's located in the uh, centre of the centre top of Australia, up in the tropical north of Australia, and Mackay is on the eastern coast, uh, probably about halfway down uh, the Queensland, uh, the state of Queensland coast. It's a uh, quite a long way to go by uh, sea. The options were, of course, to have it uh, trucked. Uh, from Mackay to Darwin by truck, but that just seemed a bit mail orderish to me, and and I didn't like that idea much. Uh, in the end, I decided the best thing to do would be to find a, a skipper from somewhere and get them to skip the yacht, and I'll go as crew and learn as I go along, Rick. Well, yeah, and you did, and let's talk about that crew. You had a crew, two people besides yourself. Uh, the crew member, I understand, didn't have a whole lot of experience either. The captain knew what, what what was happening. Talk about putting the crew together and what you learned from them, because there were times in the book when uh, the, the captain, for example, uh, really kept his composure when seas got a little rough out there, and you made sort of a mental note that, okay, I'm, I am I like his style. I'm going to use that when I'm the captain of the uh, Loana, and I've got people with me. Yeah, well, uh, Brian was a, an old mate of mine. He'd been up in Darwin at one stage, worked in one of the banks up here. We used to go out shooting buffaloes uh, when before the brucellosis campaign came in and they started shooting them off. Uh, but he was a great old mate of mine and uh, he'd retired over to Magnetic Island off the uh, Queensland coast. And uh, so I, I called him. I thought, well, he'll make up. He, although he's got no experience, he's uh, he's another set of eyes and he's a reliable sort of fella, so I thought he'd, he'd be good. Um, 
Paul, uh, I got him as the skipper of the boat because I'd had a tip-off from somebody else that he'd only just done the, the voyage not long before in a, in a catamaran. And he uh, knew the waters, and uh, I thought, right, well, I made a few discreet, uh, discreet inquiries around uh, for him and uh, about him, and uh, eventually approached him, and we came to a deal, and uh, he agreed, so we had the crew. We're talking on This Week in America. Our guest is Russ Swan, author of the book, Loana Comes to Darwin. You can find information at bookventure.com. Information at Amazon as well, and you can link on directly to information on the book by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. It's a fascinating journey, and let's talk about that, because there were times of tranquility where you had a chance to sit back and relax and, and contemplate life. And you had times of, of great adventure at well. Talk, how long, first of all, how long did this journey take you? It took us about um, five weeks or so, five to six weeks. And uh, it was mixed up, as you say, with some periods of just beautiful. I mean, the sailing, I think anybody who's ever been sailing will understand when I say you, you, uh, you get the whole gamut of emotions. You, you can go from awe and, and uh, thrill right through to, uh, you know, fist-clenching, you know, fear, or heart-pounding fear. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's really, it's really uh, an excellent way to, to live, being a cruising sailor, because, uh, you know, I'm a great believer in use it or lose it. And, and I think uh, cruising sailing is one of those things where you've got to think about what you're doing, because uh, at times, you, <clears throat> excuse me, your your life is literally on the line if you make a bad decision, or there could be at least bad consequences. On the other hand, you have some just absolutely simply amazing uh, experiences. In in fact, my my uh, my reason to buy a boat was uh, was started when I was coming home from or coming back to Darwin on a, on another boat. A, a fellow asked me to crew on his boat. Uh, he'd he'd um, He'd bought a, a vessel in Fremantle. This vessel had something of a shady history. It had been apparently involved in some drug uh, running into the north of Darwin and uh, had been chased by customs and ended up uh, smashed on one of the, uh, not smashed, but grounded on one of the reefs over the, uh, to the north of Darwin on the Tiwi Islands. And uh, some chap from Darwin had salvaged the vessel got it floated and took it down to Fremantle and uh, the the uh, vessel was coming, you know, he put it up for sale and uh, Don, this fellow that uh, invited me to come along, he uh, he bought it and he was bringing it back and he asked me to help him bring it back. So I remember we were coming across a, a gulf to the uh, southwest of Darwin, the, the Joseph uh, Bonaparte Gulf. Uh, we call it the Joseph Blown Apart. It's uh, relatively shallow and can get pretty nasty. But on this afternoon, the, the, the setting sun was was uh, fading on the, the, the golden shimmer on on the on the uh, surface of the sea, and out of the sun, this uh, pod of dolphins come bouncing over the, the water towards us like a like a bunch of cowboys. You yip 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 like <laughs> it's a beautiful sight it was yeah, yeah. and they just hung around and, and I was right up on the peak up in the bow staring down and one of them uh, was was riding the bow wave in the front of the boat, you know, and he was just rolling his and a big eye as big as your fist, you know, like he was just rolling up and having a look at me and I, then he'd roll to the other side and have a look out at the other eye and I said, Good day, mate, how you going? you know, I said <laughs> It's just beautiful. What, yes. Off Broom, you know, off Broom, we, we passed by a, a sailfish. They're those, um, the, the fish, I think you might have them down in the, the tropical waters. They're, they're a really big sail along the length of the, the back and they, they have a, they're shimmering, iridescent colours. And, and this fellow was just sitting there doing circles, or really tight circles, like chasing his tail, sitting on the surface of the water. And we, like, I could have jumped over right onto his back. And we passed, and he just totally ignored us. It's just the, 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 the wildlife on, on a, like, the marine life is just beautiful. And so they're the good times. With your writing, we feel like we are there. You draw the, the reader in, and 
we can actually follow. You've got great photographs in the book. The book is Loana comes to Darwin. You've got uh, maps there. If you, you're not a big sailing fan and some of the words you're afraid, well, I don't understand the language. There's a glossary that has everything there. So you really give us everything. You, you, you've got the words and then you've got the, the pictures, the maps and, and the glossary. We really feel like we're, we're with you. And I know that was some of the comment you got from people who, who read your journal when it was just a journal. You had no idea to put the book together. And they really felt that you were there. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Rick. But uh, yeah, that's 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 uh, was before I decided to write the book. Every every trip. In fact, it was on that first trip with Don. There was another chap uh, named. His name was Robin, and he used to take photographs and uh, write down notes on all of his trips. And I said, "What are you doing? or going to all this trouble for?" And he says, "Well, I like to keep a record of the people I sail with, you know, for the future reference in case I forget things and just to remember the trips." And uh, one of those trips was uh, he sailed on a scientific trip from uh, Sumatra, I think it was, or Java in Indonesia, and he was heading west to the island of Madagascar because there was there was uh, similar plant life, similar trees. And they were prove, trying to prove that way, 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 way back, you know, while people were still running around with clubs, uh, that uh, that a voyage must have been made um, by some ancient mariners and t- taken these uh, things with them to the island of, of Madagascar. And all they had with them was a GPS, which was uh, uh, transmitting to France somewhere, but they couldn't access it. So they had no idea. You know, they couldn't influence where they were travelling. And I thought, what a marvellous story that would be. And uh, so from after that, I started keeping a record of my own trips so that I wouldn't forget stuff. And I'd take them into originally just to show my co-workers and it'd do the rounds and ultimately everybody, almost everybody, I should say, in the, in the, in the the uh, in our section, which was the police communications section at Berrimah Police Headquarters, They'd, they'd all they'd be lining up. Uh, I'd have to keep a record, a little note, on who was <laughs> getting the book next. You know, and I, I thought this is ridiculous. This is just bloody ridiculous. And then one day, uh, an assistant commissioner walked past. And he saw it sitting on my desk. Oh, oh, this is great. Can I borrow it? He's already got it in his hands, opening it up. And I thought, bloody hell! And uh, it, it struck me that it that there must be there must be something of an adventure in all of us. You know, there there must really be. Yes. People must have a longing for some sort of adventure of their own and, and, and sailing voyages and there, but for whatever circumstances they find themselves in, they would like to go. And uh, my, at that stage, I had no idea of writing. And then uh, my neighbour at the time, he, he was also an established author, uh, had, had published a, a few books, fiction books, and he said, why don't you write? A book about it after he read my journals and his uh, photo journals and I said no I got no idea how to write books I'm no book writer and he said no he said I reckon you have because he'd read a couple of the articles that um, I'd written for Cruising Holson and uh, so uh, ultimately over time I was I was uh, encouraged to write Luana Comes to Darwin and that's where it all started from but I remembered my uh, that trip by uh, Robin, you know, in his, in his big canoe. And I thought, I'd love to have read that story by him and been able to follow his journey. So if if I want that, then I'm sure readers of Luana Comes to Darwin would also want that. So that's what I set out to do, was to try and, was to try and include the reader on the voyage, if I could. Excellent reviews. The book is called Loana Comes to Darwin. Russ Swan is our guest on the program, coming to us via Skype from Australia. Uh, bookventure.com is the uh, the main site to go to. You'll find it, of course, at Amazon. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Great adventure. You mentioned some of the uh, the scenery, some of the uh, uh, the uh, real adventure when you're wondering what's going to happen next as as you're as you're sailing. But it's more than just that. Talk about some of the other aspects. I mean, you you deal with problem solving. You you uh, personal friendship evolves. Challenges that come along with a risk like this. This is more than just an adventure story, isn't it? Well, I, I think so. Well, any adventure that you go on, uh, I don't know. There's something that cements friendships with people yes. when they share a common uh, adventure and and I'm I'm not just talking about you know jumping on a plane and flying to another city and having a look around that's that's in the true sense of the word adventure 
that's not an adventure. An adventure inherently means there's an element of risk. And uh, when you have people who share an adventure, uh, whether it be mountain climbing or, or whatever, uh, they, I think those, those friendships, you get to see how people really are. There's, it strips away the outer veneer of people uh, to some extent. You get to see the real people and you can, you can bond at a deeper level, I think, with uh, people when you've gone through those sorts of experiences. Um, yeah, so uh, you mentioned earlier about um, the behaviour of a skipper. The, the behaviour of a skipper is paramount. and the, the, You have people with you that don't have much experience, then they are, and I learned this myself, you, you really do look to the skipper to, to see if things are okay. You know, and I mean, you're not going to be obvious about it. You might sort of glance out of the corner of your eye to see what the skipper's doing or how he's reacting or, or whatever. So the skipper has to exude confidence at all times and, and uh, otherwise people, once they start to get a bit shaky, become less uh, less reliable, you know. You, you, you've yes. really got to have them buoyant and going. So, and, and, and that's that's really important. For example, uh, we, we, we were going through a little gap uh, which is called the Gagari Rip up here and it's one nautical mile long and only about 80 metres wide. It's rock lined on both sides. On the eastern side, it funnels in, and on the other side, it, it, that just opens out gradually into a beautiful bank. But we were approaching from the east side, and uh, we'd mistimed it. Now, Kugari Rip is, is, uh, is the only access or the only funnel through which the Arafurex uh, Sea can empty into the Timor Sea and back. So you can imagine the, the tide rips through there at anywhere between 8 and 12 knots. So you've got to have just the top of the tide or the bottom of the tide to get through there. Uh, we misjudged it. We ended right at the start of it. We thought we were ending up entering it right at the end of it, but we were actually we were just a bit out of it, our timings, and we were at the start of it. And uh, we found ourselves caught right in the middle of it. And the, the motor was screaming and the, the, the temperature gauge was going up into the red and there's no wind to help push us out. And we, we didn't really want to just ease the throttle and back up into uh, the, the funnel back outside because the water outside there was boiling up around like a tea kettle. We'd be swamped. So we had no room to turn around and we were really stuck. Obviously, we, we did get out. But it did need uh, good teamwork and, and, and instant action by everybody concerned. That's one of the adventure parts of the book, Luana. It comes to Darwin Ruswan, our guest on the program. A few minutes left in the show. It's interesting you talk about in, in a situation like that, you really learn about other people, that, that it's sort of veneer is stripped away and you learn about them. What did you learn about yourself during that, that five-week period? That had to be a learning experience for you too, and maybe found uh, something there that you didn't know you had before. You learn a lot uh, about yourself, I guess. Um, when you go into a, a war zone, you, you sort of come out of there with certain opinions about yourself. Uh, I, I didn't have any secrets about my, my inner workings, if that's how I can describe it. Um, I, I didn't have any problems with having to... I guess that what I learned was that I, I enjoyed the challenge. And, uh, it sounds like it, yeah. Challenges is, challenge is what it's all about. And, uh, and uh, you know, subsequent voyages were to prove to me that I was all about uh, the voyage rather than the destination. Like, I mean, uh, years later, we... I sailed, uh, for example, just one example, I sailed to the Tanambar Islands, which is just 300 nautical miles north of Darwin. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, a short couple of day trip across uh, the the Arafura Sea to uh, Sumlaki, the provincial capital. And as soon as I dropped anchor there, I this terrible feeling of anti-climax, you know, like <laughs> it's all over yeah. now, what to do? What am I going to do now? You know, <laughs> everybody's saying, oh, let's go to shore, let's go ashore, let's have a swim. They didn't really want to go to a swim because a dead pussycat come floating right beside the boat. So everybody decided they wouldn't want, didn't want to go swimming after all. <laughs> I mentioned in the beginning yeah. you're, you're working on a sequel. I, how how was that coming? Yeah, I'm about three quarters of the way through that. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, it's uh, called Learning from King George. 
it's a follow-on from Luana. Luana was my learning uh, learning trip uh, where I learned how to sail the boat. Uh, but I, I, but in terms of being able to command the boat as a skipper and make all the decisions, I, I didn't actually have too many of those. But so when we got it to Darwin, I, I put it in the, uh, I, I put it out in the, the four and a half moorings out out in the, the harbour, and uh, you know I used to do a few sail sailings around the harbour and so on, but no trips. Uh, but and and I did do. Excuse me. One one trip uh, to the northeast of uh, of Darwin, a place called Port Essington, where the Brits tried to establish a uh, uh, a settlement in the 1800s, and it failed. And there's you know it's quite a historic sort of place. The cemetery is particularly moving uh, when you see the number of dead women and and uh, you know deceased women and and, and Children all the same day that obviously died in childbirth. It was a stark example of of, of the type of the, the hard life that they had. And uh, anyway, on the way uh, on the way back, the bloke I had with me, he'd um, it was in the tent for a moment, and he went to get a loose uh, rope from the water, which was dragging, and the wind got behind the sail and went cracking across the boat and smacked him right in the head. So I had to take him back to uh, Port Essington. And then the following week, I had another fellow. We, we left the boat there, and the following week, a fellow uh, I flew over, and uh, a fellow come to help me sail the boat back to Darwin. And we just got within sight of Darwin, and uh, he pulled the plug, the, the uh, top off a whistling kettle, and scalding water gushed all over his face and burned his face. And I thought, God, I hope I don't get you know things happen through. Oh yes. So it's, it. So things can be, you can have accidents on on a boat, but the thing is, uh, you know, you just can't call up an am, an ambulance. Yes, that's the, that's the element of risk that we were talking about before. Well, this so is... anyway, uh, learning from King George, then well, I then did a trip over to um, uh, West Australia across the Joseph Blow de Platt Gulf, and uh, on the way back we got hit with a series of really heavy storms, and uh, I hope I've described those adequately. I am looking forward to having a chance to uh, to read and talk about that as well. The book we're talking about is the second one that Russ has written, uh, Loana Comes to Darwin. It uh, includes illustrated maps, photographs, glossary of nautical terms. All you have to do is uh, sit back and, and go along on, on the adventure as it unfolds. Russ, uh, excellent job. It, it's a great adventure, a well-written book. You, you're an excellent writer, and you you bring us along with you. We feel like we're actually on the adventure, and uh, it, it was so much fun having you on the program. Loana comes to Darwin. Russ Swan, our guest on the program. Russ, good luck with the new book, and thank you so much for being with us on the program. Uh, good on you, Rick. Thanks very much, Mike. It is my pleasure. The book, once again, Luana Comes to Darwin. Russ Swan is the guest on the program. He's the author of the book. Book's available at bookventure.com in their bookstore. You'll find it at Amazon, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program, right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.